staying this lane, obviously a task and is like, you know, a, I don't know, um, speaks to the effectiveness of your diet model, what you've been doing and adhering to this whole time and like your programs and whatnot. So if you're only lifting three times a week and you don't really do like allocated cardio sessions necessarily, as far as I know, like, do you like, like a militant fucking structure, make sure you get 10,000 steps a day or what is your energy expenditure modality of choice? You just go for long walks or is it more diet driven through a deficit? Yeah. If I'm just, if I'm just maintaining my body weight, I can literally do no exercise. I can just do my three lifts and sit down all day, work all day, walk 4,000 steps and I can maintain my leanness. If I want to get consistently leaner, it definitely helps to get those 10,000 steps in. Um, but I definitely found that for me, I've, I've done cardio, like I've done high amounts of training and gained weight and didn't lose any weight. And because my appetite would, would, would shoot up. And I have had periods where I was doing intense cardio, burning 800 calories or more. And then, you know, I came home, I tried to be on my diet and, uh, I just couldn't stick to it. I get hungry. And at the end of the day, also like if you, if your calories are already restricted, right? Let's say you're someone's 180 pounds, they're eating 2,200 calories a day. Your calories are already restricted. If you add in too much exercise, um, it's not going to be like, if you go and do a hard running workout and if you burn 800 calories, it's not like your metabolic, your maintenance, um, the amount of calories you, you, you burn that day is 800 calories higher. Your body will compensate. And this is way stronger when your calories are already reduced. If you're eating as much as you want, there's less compensation, but when your calories are reduced and you jack up your energy expenditure, well, now you're lazier. Now you're lying on the couch. Now you're not having sex as good. You're putting less energy in the bedroom and all these things. It, it, yeah. You have literally, if you're awake for 16, 17 hours a day, that's 16, 17 hours a day to burn calories. And if you, and if your calories are reduced and you're doing a hard cardio, you're lazier and yeah. you can serve. And I found that the most powerful way to lose fat effortlessly is through neat non-exercise activity thermogenesis. If I'm talking here and I'm moving my hands and I'm, I'm shuffling around, I'm burning more than just the person just sitting here. Da, 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 da. Like I, and I, I've learned if you can kind of master the, the neat and you know, you're on a business call, you're walking around, you're doing this and that it's a lot easier. Um, it's a lot easier to stay lean. And you know, if, if you look at some research, they, they'll, they'll overfeed someone by a thousand calories a day. And you know, some people will gain loads of fat. They'll gain seven, eight pounds of fat that month. And some people will gain two pounds. Mm. And it, 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 and it's, it's, it's that, that neat response. If you can, and I think you can train it. Um, I, I literally think you can train it, but I get my leanest. Like I've, I love doing boxing training and stuff like that, but, but I get my leanest when I cut out, cut out all that crap. Like I cut yeah. it out. I just do my lifts and I, and I just walk and focus on neat. But then when I do all the boxing stuff, my body, the more training you do, especially like at a certain intensity, the more food and calories and re replenishment you want. And maybe you could theoretically just add the perfect amount of extra calories to, to, to handle that. But I just found it very hard in, in, in practice to do that. And, and when you have to add in food calories, it's really easy to go over. So I get my, every time I've gone into my absolute leanest, full blown lower ab veins, face, like very chiseled. It was literally just uh, three shorter 40, 40 minute lifts per week, walking, nothing else except for just daily random movements. Um, and, uh, and you want that to happen. You, you it, it's a very good thing because a lot of times the athlete that, that, that gets injured, that works out all the time, and then they're injured. Then when they're not moving around, they pack on 20, 30 pounds in a few months. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas like, you know, I, I find it eat, like if I, if I have to if I'm you know, and, and again, people literally, you can test this with yourself. If you're ever sick for a week, you usually lose four or five pounds. You don't move at all. Mm. It's all, it's all like 60, 70% of the calories you burn is, is your, is your basically your resting metabolic rate. So 70% of the energy you're going to burn anyway is literally just lying down. So yeah, yeah, like get your lifts in, walk around. Um, but, but exercise is, is a, is a small bucket. It's, Cardio is not as big of a bucket as far as fat loss and getting lean. And it is not like one, like burn 800 calories. Now you're 800, now you're 800, 800 calories more. It just, it's, it's a lot of that kind of just uh, a lot of that goes out the window. Um, and uh, it's, it's nutrition. That's why I'm, I'm diligent with my fasting. 
I'll eat 22, 2400 calories, make it really enjoyable. And, uh, and I'll get leaner and, and I get my leanest when I eat the same thing every day. Um, I do notice it's so much easier to get lean when I'm cooking. I like to eat out a lot, but eating out a lot, it's so much harder to like, you get the exact same meal at a restaurant and they find a way to add 400 calories to it. Mm. Um, whereas you make right. it, it, it's way, it's way easier. Um, and, uh, and you know, that's sort of how I stay lean. I understand the question about like, um, it's, it's two contrarian things trying to get very, very strong and having a lot of muscle. And then also, you know, being very, very lean. Um, and that's like, literally that's, you know, what, you know, we all strive for. How do we get as, as, as whole, as much muscle and strength as possible and get that body fat levels down. And I found that when that's the goal, having good strength and muscle with a low body fat, it benefits you to drop the training volume down. If I yeah. can, you know, and, and I, you know, some of the guys that do a lot of more training volume, they'll hold 15, 16% body fat plus most of the year. And they're eating a lot and they can go in the gym, spend more time. But if you're trying to stay under 10% year round, the volume's low. Um, you know, uh, Martin Burkhan freaking hates me, but I mean, he's someone where he, he keeps his, he, when he stays lean, he's, his volume, his volume's low. His yeah. volume's low. Um, but some of these, these leaner guys are, are, and again, but again, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you got to test things out yourself um, and see what works for you. Um, but uh, so when you're man. trying to get like when somebody plateaus and weight loss and they're eating like 2300 calories or something really low, you know, like ultimately it's likely that their meat has just decreased so much because they're just like lazy as fuck and not doing anything or moving around and making like fidgets and movements and stuff. At that point, when you recommend like going back to maintenance calories, is that the goal of it to provide the fuel to then not only fix the leptin ghrelin dysregulation for appetite, you know, feedback mechanisms, but also for making sure they're starting to like move properly again and expend calories at a maximum amount, even at rest, and then start to pull the calories back down? Yeah, yeah. This is like I have very simple um responses to any sort of pe per person in my program, a client, what to do. Um, and, you know, I think appetite is the most useful tool. If someone is, again, doing a 400 calorie deficit and they're ravenous, they're starving. That to me is the best feedback possible where go up to go up to maintenance. Bump your, if, if 300 calories, maybe it's not even maintenance, maybe it's 300 calories does the trick, or maybe it's 600. Um, I, I am a firm believer that cutting and getting lean, even when you want to get very lean, even if you want to get 70% should never feel brutal or hard. That's mm -hmm. always been, and this is how I kind of came up with my approach. My belief was like, I cannot suffer. I cannot starve. I can push myself hard. I can handle stress, but nothing is harder than starving because that's 24 freaking seven. If you have yeah. cravings and hunger, like I, you know, you can crush an insane workout or put yourself through something militant. But hunger and appetite is the hardest thing. It, it literally, I don't think people understand how hard it is to diet, yeah. especially yeah. when that diet, it's, it's 24 seven. And that willpower you have, it, it breaks down, it, it's limited. Um, and so if someone's genuinely hungry, I'm like, go to maintenance. No, not the time to cut. Um, that said, most of the times, if you structure the nutrition plan right, if you you know, fast and now you can eat pretty big meals, not fast too long, but just a short, smooth fast. Um, it gets a lot easier. Um, but, but, but one of the big issues that I see with people, um, having issues getting to a low body fat and having hormonal issues with low body fat is one, they try and diet too quickly. They want to, they have like this firm deadline they want to be ripped for, and they, they stay in a very prolonged deficit. Um, and, and they have issues when they're in a constant deficit, they're training way too much on that calorie deficit. They're doing two a days. They're doing too much exercise, too much cortisol, too much stress with already reduced calories. And they have issues. I found completely that doing very high protein diets when calories are restricted and you have to pull from fats or carbs, and now your carb intake is very low, or now your fat intake is 50 grams a day is I found as a natural compare worst thing you can do for your hormonal levels. Um, I used, I literally had periods where I was dieting and I never woke up with a boner ever. And then I've had <laughs> yeah. I've, ever, yeah. I've, I've had periods where I've been so lean and I woke up and my sex drive was very high, this and that, no issues. But I, 
you know, I kept my protein at 140 grams, maybe 150 max. And I ate lots of potatoes and with olive oil. And I just, I hit 23, 2400 calories, but I got the fats and carbs in. Mm. And my body, and you know, again, I, again, I, I think everyone should test it up for themselves because some people seem to do well on low carbs, but I was so sensitive to having my carbs down. When I did 120 grams of carbs a day, I was not the same person. Um, I keep my fats fairly high, probably 90 grams. I, I'm not super high carb. I don't love, I'm, I don't do the crazy high carbs, but I'll have, you know, 200 and, you know, what if I'm have 160 pounds of lean body mass or whatever it is, you know, 1.5 grams per pound of lean body, 240 grams is all I need. And I'm, I'm I like doing, I like doing the low end of protein. Um, yeah. So what I would speculate, and I think maybe this would benefit a lot of naturals who otherwise can't, like I'm a, maintaining sub 10% year round for most people, I don't necessarily think is conducive for everyone. Like it seems like you are a bit of an outlier in that aspect, but I do think there's a few things you do that probably allow you to get away with it more than the average person. And that's your fatigue accumulation through the week is low or than a normal person who's doing shit tons of cardio, working out four to five days a week. So you have that kind of like recovery capacity to support holding your hormones essentially, or holding the production of them at a higher level. In addition to that, you mentioned the carbohydrate intake and fat intake that goes against like what everyone thinks is at least a gram per pound of body weight of protein and then decrease either they strip out all fat and they end up with like a low fat diet, which obviously is going to fuck up your hormone production, or they strip out carbs, which is going to prevent there's something called SHBG, which is kind of like dictating of your free testosterone levels. So ultimately, if you're pulling out all your carbs and you have like very low, um, like uh, insulogenic cascades that lead to SHBG going to like female territory, you could have like a normal looking total T, but like crashed free test and end up with not being able to get a boner, not being able to, you know, your sex drive shit ability to pack on muscles low. So there's like definitely something to be said about actually getting, even if you're in a deficit, a balanced amount of fat, protein, carbs. Because once you strip too hard from either of these categories, like you start to really fuck with your body's ability to maintain any level of homeostasis. So I think that those two things, like the balanced diet, even though it's in a deficit, plus the low fatigue seems to be able to maintain you at like a normal level is like what mm -hmm. I speculate. A hundred percent because um, even when I was in my, you know, early twenties, I tested it. Every single person in the fitness industry was pushing a high amount of protein. Um, I learned quite a bit from Martin Burkhand, guy is super smart. I'll give credit where credit's due. He was pushing like on a guy my size, 260 grams of protein. Jesus. That when you're cal yeah, 260 grams, because he loved how filling it was or whatever. And I kind of learned, someone said this, I forget who said this, but protein is the most filling macronutrient until it's not. So one, like if you only have 80 grams of protein a day, you're going to be starving. Yeah. But if you have that big steak, you have that, that omelet and you get that, the protein needs met, even have essential amino acids or whatever. Um, you will get, for me, at least you'll get more satiated from having potatoes, crispy yeah. potatoes than just eating more meat. Cause then your my, my brain will be like, I, I have carb cravings. I have this. Um, so everyone was pushing the high protein thing and I did it. And I never, I never really tested my test. I never got my testosterone levels checked when I was doing low carb stuff. Um, but, but I just, you know, I started to realize, yes, of course, fat is very important for testosterone function. I think that one of the underrated things is what you said. I didn't even, I didn't even know about that process about, um, about low carb. Um, yeah. Like, guys who do keto, like there's guys who do carnivore diet. I'm sure you've heard of that. And yeah. guys who do keto all the time, they're SHBG literally is like higher than a girl. So they're wow. free, or it's in female territory. So it's like their total test might be like 600, but their free test is like fucking five. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did. I did see one piece of research where it was looking at fat calories and fat was the same. And then they played around with protein and carb intake. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, one of the one, like one was higher protein, whereas like less carbs were, were like, there's less carbs than protein. Yeah. And then the other one was like 1.5 grams of carbs per pound of pro protein. So if you have like 150 protein, like 225 carb, I'm pretty sure it's 1.5. And the, the testosterone difference, I think they're looking at total testosterone was 30%. Yeah. So same calories, same fat, but a 30% difference in testosterone um, by eating more carbs and less protein. Mm -hmm. And so I've always, you know, I've always kind of realized that, you know, if you're going to stay natural and you're going to keep your calories modulated, that 
hit the low end of protein, you know, from someone that's 180, 140 grams of protein, maybe 150. Um, you can probably do okay at a gram per pound. Like you can probably make that work if your deficit's not too small, but if you're trying to go above that, if you're trying to do 200, 250, it, 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 it the sex drive catapult, like, or not catapults, it, it collapses. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I kind of, I kind of tested that out, out for myself. And then once I put in the carbs and the fats pack and drop my protein down, um, then, then, uh, I woke up and it was like fucking morning wood. Everything was fucking life was good again. Yeah. You know, I started laughing when I watched comedies, when my carbs <laughs> were too low, I, I, my yeah. serotonin was down. I couldn't laugh. You know? yeah. So yeah, that fucks up your sleep too. When you have low carb, your serotonin is like, like bottomed, like you can't even like relax and get into like a parasympathetic state. You're like perpetually redlined almost. And you're like, body's just craving fucking sugar and you can't get relaxed at nighttime. Like a big carb meal can be crucial for all of those things. hundred percent. And last story, last thing I'll say on this whole maintaining a, a decent hormonal level uh, lean is that you can just cut fairly strict to 12%, 11%, maybe 10%. But when you're playing under the single digits, you have to listen to your body. And this is what no one really talks about. Um, because people just want to get to five, six percent for a show. So you can't really take a few weeks off if you have a show. But it listen to your body is so so important. It's live. If 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 anyone wants to get very lean, this is gonna be the most value you ever get about getting very, very lean. It's literally like surfing a wave. Okay. Like this is what it feels like. Maybe you're 10%, maybe you're 11%. And, you know, sometimes I'll spend a month just eating at maintenance. I'm like, I'm, I want to cut. I want to get leaner. But the time's not now. Like, it's just, I can feel it. It's like, the time's not now. I'm hungrier. And then I'll have a few days and I'll just, I'll, I'll lock in in a few days. And my appetite's down. 2,200 calories is easy. And like, I'm riding that wave and I might ride it for two months, get very, very lean. And then all of a sudden, like my body wants food again. And then I'll listen to it and I'll eat a bit more. And then I'll, maybe my weight will come up a couple pounds. Um, but the, listening to your body is so valuable when I used to try and push through and fight against it. There's a time to use willpower, but when you're talking about like getting very, very lean, staying under 10% body fat, you have to like, you have to listen to your body. If, if you have a day where you're just ravenous, you're hungry, there's no benefit for pushing through. If it's like real ravenous hunger, there's zero benefit from pushing through. You're just going to use willpower and then you're going to, it's going to collapse. And then you're going to have a bigger binge eat. You're better off just being like, okay, let me add 400 calories today. And let me kind of get back on tomorrow. Um, it's so important. It's not as important when you're 14, 15% body fat because leptin levels are, are usually fine, but under 10%, it's, 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 it made such a big difference. And so literally a lot of times I get my absolute leanest. I'm like, I want to cut, but I'm like, I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm eating a bit more. My appetite's just kind of not there. And then I get like that. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I, I, maybe I don't eat out at restaurants as much. I, I kind of cook a bit and I get a few good days in my belt and I feel I like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the deficit and I just, I, I, get, I cut fat. It's like, it's uh, but it, I can't do it all the time. That's why yeah. I, if, someone, if someone put a gun in my head and said, you have a, a fitness show, you have to be 6% this day. I, cu I couldn't do it. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. It's weird. Like I just, it just happens, you know? Hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of uh, anabolics users, they get away with, like, there's a lot of stuff they can get away with that natural simply can't when it comes to like above and beyond, you know, upregulation of like anabolic activity at the androgen receptor and stuff like the actual fat that fuels the you know hormonal synthesis and whatnot like if you have a zero fat diet as a bodybuilder who's on gear like it you are exogenously pinning it into your ass it doesn't matter if your fat is zero for at least the hormone production side of things and when your carbs are low you know your shbg being sky high is not as problematic because you're on androgens and those manually lower the shbg too so you get away with a lot of things and i think it leads to bad diet advice and this is where we see a lot of like chicken broccoli fucking recommendations and crash dieting and stuff coming from guys who use anabolics telling guys who are natural potentially like this is how i get ready for a show like this is what you got to do to get lean and then you end up with naturals or even the guys on gear too they have fucked up hormones they just don't see it because they just look at testosterone levels and that's like the only thing they care about but like thyroid's all dysregulated like all these things are off but having like the balanced approach is definitely the way to go. I don't necessarily know that everyone can maintain, you know, 500 total test or whatever, when they are doing a deep deficit, having the balanced model, but it's still certainly a fuck ton better than what a lot of people are doing, which is just like chicken breast, broccoli, crash diet, and that's fucking it. And they end up with crash thyroid, crash testosterone, sky high SHBG, like disproportionately even lower free testosterone. They end up like hating life. And it's just 
not sustainable at all whatsoever. So 100% just out of curiosity, what, what, what kind of macros do you kind of gravitate towards as far as carbs, fats, protein? Um, for me, it is usually like body weight protein yeah. and the fat content. I don't even count it to be honest. A lot of it comes from the meat and, um, like random things here and there. And then it's kind of just like filled with carbs. I'm honestly not very strict. Like, I yeah, should, like, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not, I, I used to track my macros meticulously and I, I, I burn out. I, I wasn't, a, my adherence was lower. Now I just hit calories and protein and just kind of, and just, I don't avoid fat. I don't avoid carbs. I welcome them within mm -hmm. reason. I don't eat like crazy, like fat, like ground beef. I'll do leaner cuts of steak, but I, I just, I welcome fat, welcome carbs and just hit my protein and calories. And then it's yeah. so much easier. Yeah, my calories around like 3,000 to 3,200, but realistically for the amount of activity I'm doing, that's too high. Like I sit in an office like a lot of the time. The problem is, is my fucking kitchen is like right there. So like I used to be in university walking around all the time. I'd go like lifeguard or then I was a bouncer or this or that, as well as the gym, as well as like dating life. And it was like, you didn't have the ability to just like eat because you didn't have the time to. But when it's like right there, it becomes a bit easier to fall off. So that's like my weakness personally, but obviously ultimately having a, like for you, do you have a calorie range that you stick between for adhering to your eight to 10%? Yeah. So, I mean, on my lower end, I'll do 2,200 to 2,300. And that's when I'm generally, I'm getting, you know, three pounds leaner a month, maybe four. Um, and then I'll let myself go up to you know, 3,200. I never, I don't really eat much over 3,200 ever. I just find that if I'm fasting, because every day I'll fast, my first meal is not a big meal. I'll eat 600 calories or, or you know, something like that. I, I, I like to save the appetite for the big feast. So like, it's hard to eat 4,000 calories if you only really have one big substantial meal and some dessert. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, if I'm, if I'm having my, if I've had 7,800 calories and I'm going into my big dinner at eight o'clock, like, am I going to really eat like another, like four or 3000 calories? It's going to be very difficult. So yeah. I, I just try and, and that's the cool thing with the, my approach that I do. It's that, you know, you can get leaner pretty easily. Um, but even if you kind of fuck up a bit, you don't really gain weight. You kind of just end up falling right at maintenance. Hmm. So if I'm just like, you know, if I, if I eat a ton, I'll, I'll probably just fall close to maintenance. Um, but I also have a massive appetite where I can eat. Like if I want to, like, if I, was like, I don't care at all. I could go to, out to dinner and have two or three entrees and, and, mm. and dessert. I could do it. I wouldn't like need, I'm not hungry to do it, but I could, I could do it if I wanted to. When I used to binge eat, cause I was, I do low carb. I'd be strict for four or five days. I had days where I would eat like, I don't know how much I ate cause I didn't calculate it. But like, if I had to guess seven, 8,000 calories, but like, it didn't feel good. Like I felt like yeah. I did it out of guilt and shame. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm usually around 22, 2300 and then, you know, yeah, 2600, 20 to 2800, I'll probably stay at maintenance and, and maybe, you know, maybe my weight will creep up if I start falling up to 3000, 3200, my, yeah, 3000, 3200, my weight will come up. And it, you know, what's weird, man, that like, it's hard to like, sometimes it, it, it like the, on paper, I should only gain weight this fast, but it sometimes just comes on faster. And sometimes on paper, I should only lean down this quickly. And it just, sometimes just things, things can be a little, uh, you know. Like when I'm like, I've, I've, you know, I can put on weight really easily. Like, mm. like I can, I could, if I want to be 190, like I, 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 you couldn't give me a deadline to be 6% body fat, but you could give me a freaking deadline to be 200 pounds. <laughs> I could do it. Yeah. I could, I could probably, if I'm 179, I could, I don't want to create a challenge when people ask me to do it. Cause I yeah. have zero interest in having to cut 20 pounds of fat after. Mm. Um, but I, I could, I could, uh, I could hit, you know, I could put on 20 pounds in a month easily. And it wouldn't even be hard. One thing. It'd be fat. It'd be body fat. Yeah. Yeah. Before we get into the, like the actual blood test results, one thing I wanted to ask you is over the years, more and more, like when you first started dieting, a lot of these like zero sugar, low calorie alternative type foods that aren't even really foods existed. Like a lot of the zero calorie syrups, the condiments, the this, the that, that kind of stuff has been more pre prevalent nowadays. Whereas back in the day, it was like, oh, you have chicken, put like fucking mustard or hot sauce on it. And that was like your two options, essentially. Have you found any difference in satiety or, I don't know, temptation to eat having, I don't even know if your diet consists of this, but having things with like artificial sweeteners in it versus not 
um, having like diet. Like I know you have the sparkling water, coffee, but have you ever tried to have like, I don't know, like the diet type foods that they sell, like the low carb shit or anything like that and found it fucks with your gut microbiome and like causes weird cravings or anything. Like I've always been curious about the science behind people who use like tons of like Walden farm syrup and like protein bars and this and that. And if it actually like fucks with their like gut brain access. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I, I, I've, I, I mean, at one time I had a protein, like a casein protein years and years and years ago that had aspartame or something and, and, and I'd eat it and I just had cravings after it. That mm. one fucked with me. Some don't. Um, but I generally speaking, I, I don't, uh, do any of those like super like low calorie diet alternatives. I find like maybe it works for a period of time, but then your brain just figures it out and it doesn't do much. Mm. Like, like I, I've like, I'll have a quest bar here and there. If like, I'm, I'm, if I'm traveling, I'm hungry and I'm, I'm, I want to like have a quest bar. I find that it's pretty decent. Yeah. Um, but, but, um, I don't mess around with any of those lower carb things i just find like at the end of the day if you want to get very very lean you just got to make the you got to just you know there's not really any crazy shortcuts unfortunately you know so i just structure my diet where i can i i fast i i eat a smaller medium-sized first meal and i have an awesome feast and and the the foods that do the best for me are like the like you know freaking grandma's cooking like you know, potatoes and, and like, and, and steaks. And if I try and if I have foods that are too low fat, then I will be hungry 20 minutes later. Hmm. Um, so I, I kind of just, I, because I fast, I eat like just a couple meals. I actually like, like to get foods that are pretty substantial. Like I don't need to like, you know, I can have a 1300 calorie feast. Um, so I don't, I don't play around with the Walden farms, maple syrup. I generally prefer for the most of like, you know, I'm not perfect, but most of the time I prefer to avoid artificial sweeteners. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I pretty much like, you know, I, uh, I pretty much avoid them altogether. Do you find, do you find, did you find it mess with your microbiome? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because my lifestyle has transitioned more sedentary over the years. So I think most of it is just proximity to food and lack of doing stuff outside of the office that has been more of a problem than anything. So it's kind of hard to say for certain, but it's definitely my willpower seemingly has diminished over the years where at like when I was in university, I would literally like adhere to 2300 calories plus cardio plus go to all my classes full time, then go work, then go date. And when I think about that now, like people see how much work I do and they're like, wow, like you're so productive. And I'm like, I think back to that. And I'm like, I was way more productive back when I was like oh. in my early 20s. 